So you clicked on this video and I bet the title made you do a little double take, huh? Networking events are wasting your time. Sounds pretty bold, right? Especially coming from someone who used to swear by them. That's right. I was once a devout believer in the power of networking events. And you've probably been told by mentors or coaches or peers that you should go to BNI and head up as many networking events as you can to build that contact list, right? At least that's what I heard. And that's what I did. I thought they were the key to unlocking the door to success in the video production world. But what I learned along the way completely changed my perspective. And that's the journey I want to share with you today. Now, when I first started my business, I remember making the LLC, watching as many free videos as I could on YouTube. Everyone told me I just need to go network. I need to go meet people. And I didn't, I didn't know how to network. I, I didn't know how to talk to people or how to sell or, but, but I trusted them. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to networking events. I'm going to shake hands. I'm going to get phone numbers and I'm going to try to convince people why they should spend their money on me and how I can help them with the video. Right. But if I knew what I knew now, I would honestly not do that. And I would do this instead. Now, let's rewind to the beginning, shall we? Picture this. I just launched my video production business. And when I say launch, I mean, I just made my LLC, right? I was armed with nothing but a camera, a dream, and a shell of an LLC. The day that I bought my LLC and launched my horribly built website that ended up bringing me no business, I bought into a course that, while it taught me great tactics to grow my business, prompted me to do something that ended up confusing me, confusing my prospects, and made me do a bunch of busy work instead of work that actually moved the needle in my business forward. Go sign up for BNI. Start meeting people and get your offer out there, right? Eager to get my name out there, I dove headfirst into the world of networking. I went to Google, I typed in BNI chapters near me, and I signed up to visit five different ones within my city. And two days later, I remember waking up early and going to my first one. I looked around the room and saw all these new faces of people that looked a lot more successful than me. And then there I was, nervous as hell, waiting for my turn to come up and give my elevator pitch. And finally, the one in charge called upon my name. I stood up and I started talking. Hey guys, my name is Ridge and I help business owners grow their following and presence through video content. Looking forward to meeting you all. That was it. How many of you guys can probably relate? You probably had a similar pitch or probably have a similar pitch currently. I then sat down and the room proceeded to give their introductions. And after each event, I made sure to grab as many cards as I could and start setting up one-on-one -on -one coffee meetings, hoping that one of these conversations would turn into some sort of cash in my pocket so I could afford to pay my rent. BNI, Chamber of Commerce, you name it. I was there, I was shaking hands and collecting business cards like they were going out of style. And a couple weeks go by, I end up meeting 10 plus individuals and nothing happened from any of them. I would go sit down with the roofer and we'd talk about what made him choose that niche in the first place and why is he so passionate about roofing? And then he'd ask me questions that were hollow. In reality, we didn't really care about each other. We we're just trying to get each other's business, right? And sure enough, start asking questions about their business and I, just, I wasn't an expert in any of it. I didn't really know what I was doing. Weeks turned into months and my collection of business cards grew, but my client list, not so much. It was a frustrating cycle of meet and greets, follow-up emails, and the deafening silence that followed. You guys can tell that I wrote this. I, I pre-wrote this script beforehand because I don't usually use big words like this, but I, I wanted to get across all the information necessary. So it's important that I use these words. And it wasn't until I landed my first significant retainer that the pieces really started to fall into place, but not for the reasons that you may think. Now, it took me almost four months of networking, running ads that failed and sitting back and hoping that somebody would reach out to me and show up in my DMs magically and say, hey, you do video? I want video. Now, luckily, somebody did by happenstance, just hit me up in the DMs. I don't know how they found me or made them reach out, but I was able to get a $3,000 a month retainer under my belt. And that, my friends, is what kickstarted this whole journey. Now, here's what I learned, okay? Having gone from struggling to find somebody that wants to pay me their hard-earned cash to making $30,000 plus months consistently within a year time span. Okay, number one, here's the hard truth I had to face. The networking scene, with all of its promise of connections and growth and referrals, it was not the gold mine that I thought it would be. Nine out of 10 people there don't run a successful business. They're not business owners. Maybe there's a couple solopreneurs that are real estate agents that couldn't do anything else with their life, so they end up getting a real estate license and selling homes. Sorry. Most of them are salespeople, managers, or small business executives that are told to go there by their higher ups, by their bosses. I wasn't meeting high level people that I should have been getting in the room with. They're too busy running a business. And most of these people that attend only do so with one end goal in mind, to sell their products and services. And the other thing to note too, is these business owners are usually busy running their business 
And the only groups they're a part of are usually paid groups, and they're not that cheap either. So, you know, you got to pay to play. But I get that when you're first starting out, you don't really have the money to play and be part of those big higher level groups. So, uh, yeah, just stay with me. Their only goal in BNI and Chamber of Commerce, like their only goal they really have is to sell each other and send referrals back and forth. Like that's their success metric. It's it's uh, how, how many referrals did you have? Like you get like awards based on how many referrals that you send out to other people. It's like, you're literally handing your business to success off to other people. Think about that. Like, like really think about that for a second. Your business's success is no longer in your hands. You're not running ads. You're not tracking KPIs. You're not t doing cold outbound messages. You're not doing any sort of a strategy. You're literally just building connections and hoping they're going to refer people to you. Now, most of the time they do, you get referrals, but it's not predictable. You can't rely on X input that you do in your business is going to receive X output and then scale from there. Here's the other thing too. There was no high level strategy, no masterminds, no mentorship. The, the sole intent is to send each other referrals. You literally will show up and then people will, there's like one industry of, of each person that shows up to these events, right? And there's like, there's a roofer and there's like the real estate agent and there's the plumber and then there's the videographer and then there's the, the marketing paid ads person. There's a social media manager. Like there's one industry of everybody. And then every week, you'll they'll have a new person come up and give a presentation on their services and so you have to sit there and listen to some guy talk about why this shingle is better than the other and installing grooves and what to look out for and don't get me started now the high level clients that i needed the ones who could truly benefit from me and afford my services were nowhere to be found they were out there running their business not mingling over coffee and pastries at 7 a.m here's a second thing that i learned I help businesses grow through video content. Great, but how? What made my services stand out from the sea of videographers offering the same thing? Also, what business owners? There's so many different types of industries. Who am I talking to? All of these events that I went to and the one-on-ones that I was having, they were a waste of time because I had no idea what my offer was. I was just taking whoever I could, whoever wanted to give me their money. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll make a video for you, right? I thought that I helped businesses grow their awareness and leads through video, but there was a massive problem with this. Now, before I explain the problem, let me give you an analogy, okay? There's you, and then there's your competitor, Johnny, down the street. You both want to approach a local business coach that sells a high ticket offer and has biannual masterminds, so you can pitch him your offer. Now, you approach Mr. Business Coach and you say, hey, Billy, my name is Jack, and I have a video production company here. I help business owners increase their lead flow by making high quality video assets. Would, would you be interested in having a conversation? Okay, cool. So. Mr. Hotshot Coach might consider chatting with you, but, but then imagine this, okay? Your competitor Johnny approaches him the next day and then proceeds to pitch Billy. Hey, Billy, I'll, I'll cut straight to the chase here. We specialize in creating high converting video assets for coaches like yourself in the same space that we can place strategically within their funnel process in order to double their lead flow. We've helped Coach X add an additional 5K in revenue every single month directly from our video assets. And, and Coach Y uh, was able to 1.5X their conversions while taking less sales calls. I, I'm looking to bring on one more coach this month that wants similar results. Are you down to chat? Do I need to explain anymore? Allow me to for redundancy. I had no offer. My offer was incredibly broad, generalized, and uninteresting. Speaking to business owners meant, meant that I was speaking to no one. Every type of entrepreneur has a unique set of pain points, fears, problems. We don't speak directly to those problems. No one will listen. Now, number three, third point. I didn't have conviction in my offer. I knew that videos could work as a solution to some business owners. Like I had the belief that the system of videos worked, but, but I wasn't excited and convicted of what I had to offer. I didn't really have the belief that my videos would actually make you a bunch of money, would actually save you a bunch of time, would actually help your processes within your team internally, right? I didn't really believe in the results they had to offer. Like I could make cool videos, but I didn't know much of the strategy. I just hoped that my services would provide value and solve the specific problem my audience was facing. But here's the kicker. It wasn't the offer that I wasn't confident in, it was myself. No confidence in my own ability to be able to figure it out, even if I didn't have the solution. Well, I want this real estate agent to buy from me and I think I'll be able to grow their audience and bring them more leads. Okay, but what if it didn't? What if we start working together and my videos aren't actually providing the results they're looking for? Do I know how to find the solution for them? Am I confident enough that I will figure it out anyway? 
Everybody starts somewhere. There's a first time for everything. I don't expect you to know exactly how you're going to deliver results to your clients when you lack experience, but I do expect you to have the resources, the people, and the emotional intelligence to be able to figure it out anyway. Once you find this internal confidence, then you will be able to sell. Perks of having a mentor by your side to be able to take on clients because you know that if you ever have a bottleneck or you, you, you're not getting the results you want or whatever happens, you can immediately go to said mentor and be like, hey dude, I'm having XYZ bottleneck with X client. Can you help out? Sure, man, walk me through it. Sit down, boom, here's the solution, go implement. You got books, you got YouTube, you got courses, all that jazz. Now, quick side note, for those of you that have mentors, make sure that this mentor isn't just some big business owner that sold for a bunch of a business for a bunch of money, but it's in a totally different industry. Make sure that if you're gonna learn from someone, learn from someone who's doing exactly what you wanna do. Little pro tip. Point number four, networking does not provide predictable lead flow. You can't spend X dollars on ads and get Y dollars back. You can't just do Y output and receive Z input. It's volatile. You're at the mercy of your network and hoping that people will refer you. There's no way to scale a business predictably within that atmosphere. So to recap, networking events typically don't house the audience you're trying to sell. It's not where they live. Figure out your audience, how do you actually help them, and then find where they gather and then go there, okay? Two, I didn't have a niche, I was a generalist. And as a generalist, you can't charge premium pricing and separate yourself effectively from your competitors. You are simply going to be in a constant battle of who has the lowest price. Three, I didn't have conviction in myself and was expecting people to buy from me. Usually conviction doesn't come naturally until you fake it till you make it. It's kind of like a, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? But at the end of the day, focus on the results your clients are wanting and then work relentlessly to provide it for them. Arm yourself with the knowledge required so you never have to doubt if you can figure it out. Books, coaching programs, etc. like I said before, right? And then four, lastly, figure out a predictable lead acquisition funnel that actually works. A funnel that allows you to build a more sustainable business and stop being a freelancer. Do whatever it takes. Pay a coach, like me, maybe if you want to, you know, no pressure, to just show you how to do it, right? Like just be like, hey dude, you're doing really well. You built a company sustainably and predictably and efficiently. Show me how to do what you did. Cool, Here, here's the resources. You can do that or you can go to YouTube, you can read books and try to piece everything together in a way that works for you, which can definitely be done. It just probably gonna take a little bit longer. So hopefully that helps guys. So I guess networking can be a good marketing tactic, but just don't rely on it, right? That's a great way to guarantee a life living in a constant feast and famine cycle. And if you are going to network, go to the events where your ideal audience gathers. Thank you again for coming to my tech talk. I hope this is valuable. Go ahead and leave a comment below. What do you guys think? Is networking super valuable? Does it work for you? What are your thoughts? Do you agree, disagree? Let's start a discussion. Let's start conversation. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.